Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Sunday School class. Hey, you can see I'm back outdoors today. That's kind of nice. I like that. The weather's good. Um, hey, we're staying on our character traits here of Jesus, and today we are talking about the character trait of being consistent. Being consistent. Um, I think it's so important in our personal lives, it's so important in our Christian lives, that we show a life of consistency. Consistency, consistency. Have you ever heard of a, the term flash in the pan? Well, you know, the first thing I came to when I really started to put this together was, you know, this flash in the pan. And I'm saying, yeah, I wonder, really, where did that phrase come from? I've used it all my life. What in the, where in the world did that phrase come from? And so I, I, I looked up the origination here of the phrase. It came out of the 1800s, by the way. And it came out of a time when flintlock muskets were being used. And so they would attempt to take and fire the musket. It resulted in the gunpowder flaring up in the pan, but no ball ever fired. And they called it a flash in the pan. Uh, the definition, when I kind of looked it up, was, was uh, telling us how we use it today. And it, it was a thing, it's a thing or a person whose sudden brief success is not repeated or it can't be repeated. Or, or, or the start of a season, it's just a, a flash in the pan. You ever wonder why in the World Series, that in the World Series they, had se they have the best out of seven games? Well, because, you know, you go into that first game and probably anybody could win it. Probably either team could win it. But who can make the long haul? Who's consistent? Who can play under pressure? Who can play when they've got some injuries and when they get tired? I think one of the most difficult things, and one of the most difficult challenges that we have in our life, it's the challenge to be consistent. Because our life is like a roller coaster. You know, life, it, we, we're up and we're down like a roller coaster. It throws us from side to side. It just kind of turns our world upside down, like some roller coasters go upside down. And uh, it's like a roller coaster ride. You know, we're always challenged with these, with these decisions, with these struggles. And all of these problems that we seem to, to have on a daily basis and what we have to deal with, it kind of causes us to lose our focus sometimes. So how many people, you know, do you really know that, hey, they, they had a really, they, boy, they lived for, for the Lord Jesus Christ. They lived for him for a month or a year, maybe a couple of years. They were just kind of a flash in the pan. They went away. Why? They weren't consistent. They didn't, there was something they didn't have. So we've got to be this consistent, growing Christian. Sometime after Paul wrote his first letter to the, the, the church at Thessalonica, uh, they were having a lot of troubles, a lot of situations had arisen in the church. And so he wrote the second letter. And in the second letter, in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse number three, he says, let no man deceive you by any means. For in that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. A falling away first, he talks about here. Today, I want us to actually look at a person's life maybe a little bit more in detail, and I want us to look at Caleb. If you remember correctly, as we kind of set the scene for this, and I'm just gonna be pulling verses here and pulling verses there, but as we um, take a look at this, we had Moses, when they came to the edge there of, of Canaan, he sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan to spy it out, to find out, just to kind of do reconnaissance so that they could see exactly what they were going to be up against. And they sent the 12 spies out and 10 of them came back with a bad report. Two of them, Joshua and Caleb, came back with a good report. 
So turn with me over to Joshua, the 14th chapter. I'm really apologizing for all my fun dogs that I've got going out here. I don't know where they're, my neighbors have got some that are really making a lot of noise right now. I think we must have some sirens or something going on. So let's look at some of the challenges that happen here when we're trying to be consistent, trying to build this 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 consistency in our lives you know Caleb's journey as we look at this it was consistent but he was faced with a lot of things that, that happened in his daily life one of those things that we can clearly see was he was frustrated he had frustrations here in verse number 10 he had been wandering in the wilderness now for 45 years and we look at Joshua, the 14th chapter, verse 10, it says, And now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, ever since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. He's now 85 years old. He's wandered in the desert with the children of Israel who disobeyed God, for 40 years, 45 years. You know, and he has these frustrations and I'm and, and, and these fears also we see in verse number eight. And he's questioning, is this ever, ever gonna happen? Are we ever gonna make it? In the eighth chapter, he says, nevertheless, my brother that went up with me, made the heart of the people melt. Those other 10 spies, at this point in time in their life as we're looking at this story, they're dead. It's just now Joshua and Caleb that are left out of this with the children of Israel here. And he said, they went up, but they made the heart of the people melt. When they came back with that bad report, it just... It just took all the life out of the people. They said, we can't do this. But then he goes on and he says, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So he had some frustrations. He had some fears. He had some failures. Like we just read, wandering in the wilderness for 40 years in verse number 10. Yeah, I, I think about how many times on things I have failed, how many times I've made mistakes. I think sometimes if I was to, to count my failures against, uh, against what's, what's came out really well, probably it was 80% failures and 20% success. But the true thing is to keep and be consistent. So, you know, how, how discouraging was this for a man of great, great faith like Caleb? How discouraging was this for Caleb? Um, it had to really be rough. You know, how, how did he feel, you know, when in verse number eight there we look and it says, they just made the heart of the people melt. He also had some foes, he had some enemies. And there were people that lived in those cities. And I love what he said at the first part of uh, verse 12. He says, now therefore give me this mountain wherefore the Lord spake unto me that day. But there were some foes and some enemies. We're going to look over into uh, and, and stay with this here, but let's talk about some character of building consistency let's let's kind of talk about the character for building consistency the love for the Lord our God the faith in God's promises as he's given us staying in Joshua the 14th chapter in verse number 9 it says and Moses swore on that day saying surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. Wow. 
Look at what he has to say there. Caleb, he, he reminds, he's reminded of these promises that came through Moses from God. That surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance. But not just for him, also for his family, also for his children. Because when we live a Christian life that's consistent and our children see the consistency, they will want to follow. They'll want to follow in our steps if we're consistent, if we've been successful in our Christian lives. So God rewards those people of faith. I wonder how many times Caleb, you know, he went into battle with, with in, in the different battles that they had to go through to, to gain the promised land, and how many times that, that he just kind of shook his head, we could have done this a long time ago. Can you imagine the frustration he had when Jericho came down just like God told them it would come down? But I love, I love Caleb. Caleb's passion he has here because as we look in verse number 11 he says as yet I am as strong this day as I was the, the day Moses sent me as my strength was then even so is my strength now for war both to do to, to go out and to come in verse number 12 he says now therefore Give me this mountain, wherefore the Lord spake in this day. For thou, <coughs> thou hearest in that day how the Anakites were there, and that the cities were great and fenced. If so be the Lord will be with me, then I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Well, he had so much to say here as we look at this, didn't he? He said, the Lord's going to drive them out. We're going to be successful with this. He had a passion for it, didn't he? It was an absolute passion that you see as he says, give me this mountain. He was consistent. And you know, when we have consistency... We're going to have rewards. We're going to have crowns. Caleb received the promises that came to him as we step down into verse number 14. God had promised. Moses had promised. Verse 14 is delivered. In Joshua, the 14th chapter, verse 14, Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb. Wow. Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb. And it goes on. And it also says, also his children. And it says, because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. He received the inheritance because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. Caleb was successful when others were not. Why? Because he was consistent. He conquered his land and all the all those that were in the land, he drove them out. Not all of Israel could take and, and say that. And then Caleb's, as I said, his 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 blessings it took and extended out to his family, as we see in verse 15. And it says, in the name of Hebron before was, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, <clears throat> but he goes on in the end of the verse and says, and the land, uh, and, but, it, but it talks about how the, the land had rest from war. Him and his children took and inherited that land, and it was totally at peace. So we have this call. We have a call here to be consistent. 
that's a call to take and to apply these character traits of Jesus to our own personal life. The character trait of consistency, but also the others we've been talking about. And the remembrance that God keeps his promises. In James, the first chapter, in verse number 14, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he hath tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to him that love him. Notice James talks about this consistency. If we endure here, we're going to get the reward. I'm going to just hit a couple of fast verses here. <clears throat> In, 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 verse, in Matthew, we're skipping over. I'm going to kind of jump around here for a couple of minutes. And in Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 34, it says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Realize our reward is when we get to heaven. It's when we get there. God's been preparing it, and we should not, we should, we should realize that we're going to receive it. In the book of 1 Corinthians, in the 6th chapter, verse 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And he goes on and he says, Be not deceived. Don't compromise. Be consistent. In Matthew, the 10th chapter, verse 22, it says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus is speaking here. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Talks about that long term, that marathon we talked about last week. Consistency. Also in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 13, it says, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. And then we go over to the book of Mark. 13th chapter, verse 13. And he says, and ye shall be hated of all men. Back to what Jesus said earlier. For my name's sake. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It's been said more than once. And it's the words of Jesus. And it's the challenge for us to be consistent. You know, I've always encouraged people over all the years to be consistent in their personal lives. We're talking about our Christian lives here, but consistency in our personal lives, it's extremely important. And I've always really promoted with all of my employees to always take in and do everything they can for retirement plans because one day you're gonna you're either gonna get old or you're gonna die and we're actually gonna do both to be consistent about it not for a month a year a day you know uh, five years a couple of weeks ago I took and we had our our representative in for the 401k and and she was talking to the group and I was giving them an a, a couple words here before I even handed it over to her and I gave them a couple of real quick examples uh, one of the examples was taking and and putting two hundred dollars a month in a retirement in all of these one these examples I'm gonna take and give you here they're basically based on trying to put something in a good growth stock mutual fund, something that has a really good 10-year track record. And most of the time you can find something that over a 10-year period has produced pretty close to 10% or maybe even better. So, you know, the challenge first was $200 a month, interest rate of 10% on it, and do that for five years. You know, at the end of the five years, came out to $15,816.48. So I said, okay, let's see about doubling that. What, five years, that's, you know, you're not gonna retirement, retire on $15,000. But on, but doing 10 years, 
at the same example, $200 a month, $2,400 a year, a person would have $41,510.40. Wow. 10 years. It's a long time. But you know, you got to be consistent. You got to keep going on. What's that look like? The same example. What does that look like for 20 years? It comes out to 153,000. It's quite the jump. Three times. And then we look at that exact same example over 30 years and you have almost a half a million dollars. But it all had to do with being consistent of doing something every single month. I threw one last example at him. Because, you know, so many people, they seem to pride themselves in their, their new cars. And uh, I said, you know, a normal car payment these days is going to cost you about $500 a month. If you do that exact same example, And put $500 a month away and you do that for 30 years you're looking at a return of better than 1.1 million dollars I guess enjoy your car huh but we are called to be consistent in our personal lives but we're, we're called to be consistent in our Christian lives God's promise it doesn't promise us money I was just using that as an example in James, the first chapter, verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. We talked about that a little bit earlier. And then I want to go back to the words of Jesus in Matthew 24, 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So my challenge that I've got to you today, be consistent. Be consistent. Hey, guys, love you. I'll catch you later.